Hello, my name is Sandeep Devabakthani. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. As part of Atrium Cardiology Collaborative's Under Pressure, a focus series on hypertension, I will be discussing the appropriate blood pressure technique. Before we discuss how to take a blood pressure measurement, I first wanted to, dis uh, to define what blood pressure means. The blood pressure is a measurement that is used to indicate your cardiovascular health. In fact, having a high blood pressure has been associated with increased mortality and car adverse cardiovascular outcomes. That is why it is important to keep your blood pressure under control. The blood pressure is defined as the force where the blood exerts against the blood vessel walls. The force is generated by the pumping action of the heart. Pressure occurs when flow is met by the resistance of the blood vessel walls. And the flow and resistance can change depending on the condition of the heart and blood vessels. For example, in patients with heart failure, there is a decreased cardiac output, which then means there is a decreased flow, and that can lead to a lowering, lowering of your blood pressure. This can then result in a compensatory response by the heart, and the way it does that is by causing an increase in the vascular, uh, vascular tone, which will cause basic constriction. And this increases the resistance and then leads to an increase in your blood pressure. And this it can be a vicious cycle over time. And there is also other conditions such as coronary artery disease where you would see an increase in your blood pressure. Blood pressure is defined as uh, in terms of millimeters of mercury. This is the blood pressure graph that I want to discuss briefly. By taking your pulse, you can feel that blood pressure fluctuation with each heartbeat. The pulse which you feel is actually a pressure wave that travels from your heart through your arteries. The pulse pressure is a d difference between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. The systolic blood pressure is the maximum pressure exerted by the blood against the artery walls. This results when the ventricles contract and normally you want the systolic blood pressure to be around 120 millimeters of mercury. The next thing I want to discuss was the dichotic notch. And this represents the interruption of blood flow due to the brief block flow of blood that closes the aortic valve when ventricles relax. The diastolic blood pressure is the lowest pressure in the artery while the ventricles are relaxed. And this results when the ventricles relax, and this is normally read as 80 millimeters mercury in a healthy patient. You can then take the average of the systolic and diastolic pressures, and that would be the mean arterial pressure. Now that we have discussed the definition of the blood pressure, let's talk about how to take a blood pressure measurement appropriately. First, it is important to instruct patients to avoid caffeine or smoking 30 minutes prior to measurement. Otherwise, you could have a falsely elevated blood pressure. Also, make sure to have a quiet and warm room. The next thing to do is tell your patient to be seated quietly for at least five minutes because if they are having anxiety or other issues, this could lead to an increase in their blood pressure reading, which may be falsely measured. The next thing you want to do is make sure that the arm is free of clothing. And this can elevate the pressure if you put the cuff over the clothing. The next thing you want to do is palpate the brachial artery to, in order to assure a viable pulse. Then select the appropriate 
Osage cuff. The width should be about 40% of the upper arm, and the length should be about 80% of the upper arm. Next, you want to make sure is that the sensor is on the medial side of, an ar of the arm in order to have an appropriate reading. The lower border of the cuff should be about one inch above the intercubital crease to make sure that you're not missing the breeding. And finally, the arm should be positioned so that the brachial pulse is at heart level. And sometimes, if the patient is just sitting in a chair, you will have to raise the arm in order to get at the heart level. If the pulse is above the heart level, this could lead to a falsely low blood pressure. And conversely, if it's below the heart level, the blood pressure reading could be too high. So it is important to make sure it's at the correct level. Now, let's talk about how you should take the blood pressure. First, you want to palpate the radial artery as you inflate the cuff until you no longer feel a pulse. And this is considered to be the pulse of obliteration. And this can be estimated as the systolic blood pressure. Then, once you've uh, determined your pulse of obliteration, it is important to deflate the cuff and wait 30 seconds before you pump it up again. At that time, inflate the cuff about 30 millimeters of mercury above the impulse of abrogation, which is considered your estimated dog blood pressure. And this allows to avoid errors with the, um, the escultory gap. This is the uh, silent interval that may occur between the systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Make sure to use the bell of the stethoscope over the brachial artery to be able to hear better. And then deflate the cuff at a rate of two to three millimeters per second. If you go too fast or too slow, you may adjust the blood pressure reading falsely. So what should you expect to hear with the blood pressure sounds? Well, when you first inflate the cuff to constrict the artery, you should not hear anything once you cut off the blood flow. And then as you start to slowly release your cuff pressure, then you will start to hear sounds again. The first sound that you should hear is considered to be the systolic blood pressure, and that's the top number. And it's important that you don't drop your, uh, deflate your cuff too fast, or else you might miss that systolic blood pressure. The last sounds you should hear are your diastolic blood pressure, which is also known as your bottom number. And it is important to listen for another additional uh, 10 to 20 molars of mercury after you hear that last sound, just to make sure that you didn't miss anything. And the average blood pressure reading is 120 over 80. Now that you, we have discussed the proper technique, we will now show you a video to properly demonstrate how to take the blood pressure technique. Hi, Ms. Mapp. How are you doing today? Good, thank you. Great. Um, I just, I'm, I'm going to be doing your blood pressure, so I just have a few questions before I start doing your blood pressure. Have you had any coffee in today? I have not. Okay. Uh, have you, uh, do you smoke? I do not. Okay. And uh, do, do, have you had any exercise in the last 30 to 60 minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, no. Okay, great. I just asked this question because they can actually elevate your blood pressure and that might affect your reading that's going on. So now I'm just going to ask you to sit up straight in the okay. chair and keep your feet flat on the floor. One thing I'm going to do before we get started is to put the blood pressure cuff on just to make sure it's the right size for you. But then I'll ask you to lift your arm to have it like heart, parallel to your heart so that way it'll be level. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Do you have a preference which arm I use? Let's go with this. Okay. So I'm going to put this on. Have you had your blood pressure taken before? I have. Okay, so this is probably something normal for you. Okay, it looks like it's within range. I'm just gonna make sure this is on snuggly with that. Is that too tight for you? Feels good. Okay, great. 
not think that's a good fit for that. Okay, so before I get started with the blood pressure, I am just going to make sure that your heart rate is, uh, or your pulse uh, is where it um, is. And then once I check your pulse, uh, I'm going to inflate those just to make sure that when I don't feel it anymore, that'll help me determine where I should inflate for the blood pressure reading. So I felt to around 96 and then disappeared. So I'm going to pump it up 20, 30, about that. So I'm just going to grab my stethoscope. Just trying to adjust your arm here to make sure it's not too hot. Is it too cold for you? No, nope, okay, feels good, great. thanks. Thanks. Okay. I'll support your arm as I do this. And now I'll just take the blood pressure cough off of you. So I heard your blood pressure around 102 for the diastolic and for um, around 68 for your diastolic. Is that normal for you? It is. Okay, great. But, so because that's um, something that you're used to having, it's, uh, I'm not concerned about your blood pressure. That's great. So now I just have a few other questions about to ask just about your physical exam. Did you have any questions for me at this point? I don't. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you for joining and watching our video on blood pressure technique. To learn more about other areas of hypertension, please visit our YouTube channel.